Patrick. We're not going to talk much about him today, but he lived a long time ago, over a thousand years ago. A long time ago. And when he was an older man, he was a bishop, and he's wearing bishop's robes and a bishop's hat, which is called a mitre. And he's holding a shepherd's crook because he was the boss of a lot of other folks who were like preachers, priests. He was their uh, shepherd. And so he has a shepherd's crook to stand for that. Well, St. Patrick's Day is about wearing green and having good luck and thinking about the country of Ireland. Now in Ireland, there are some special little magical folks. Does anybody know what they are? Leprechauns. Yes, leprechauns. This story is called Leprechauns Never Lie. Now the leprechaun is like a little magical creature, and he has a special job. Leprechauns make shoes for fairies, and fairies are small, so you can imagine the shoes are small. And the fairies always pay for their new shoes with gold. And that's why you always hear about leprechauns and their pot of gold, because they save their gold and they hide it. And that's what this story is about, trying to find the leprechaun's pot of gold. <coughs> there was this wee hut nestled in a glen near a river. In it lived Nancy and Graham. Each had the other, and they lived simply. Their needs were few. The thatch needed patching. The firewood needed gathering. The water barrel needed filling. And the potatoes needed digging. But Nancy was lazy, and Graham was ailing. And there was naught but blathering between them. Came to be, the rain came drip, drop through the roof. The chimney pot grew cold. There came to be, just a wee bit of cold rainwater soup in the pot. Oh, woe is me, cried Graham, to starving we are. What am I to do with such a lazy child? Ah, uh, hush your nagging, Graham, said Nancy. I have a mind to catch me a leprechaun. And when I've made him tell us where his gold is hidden, tis rich for life will be. Ah, oh, is it raven yar, girl? Tis no easy thing to catch a leprechaun. I, said Nancy, have heard tell, but we could make right use of a treasure, so I'll give it a try. Well, it was just as easy as tripping over a log, which is what happened. Nancy was running every which way looking for a leprechaun when she tripped over a log and fell splat right on top of one of the wee fairy men. Well, he wiggled and he woggled and he howled like a banshee. But Nancy had him firmly by the seat of his britches. And that was that. Let me go, shrieked the leprechaun. Sure, and I'll let you go. You just tell us where your gold is hidden. Ah, uh, it's in your very own straw pile, but you haven't the wit to find it, grumbled the leprechaun. We'll see about that, leprechaun. <coughs> Nancy found an old potato sack and she popped the leprechaun in it and then took him to sit next to Graham on the bench outside the hut while Nancy got the pitchfork and she began to pitch the straw every which where. She won't be finding any gold in the mess she's making, grumbled the leprechaun. And after that, Nancy got the ladder and she put it up against the hut. And then every fork full of straw she carried up the ladder to the roof. Well, sure, and the whole of the straw pile was on the roof, and not a mite of gold to be found. Ah, you're lying, leprechaun. There was no gold in that straw pile. A liar I'm not, 
said the leprechaun, just forgetful at, at times. I remember now the mice were nosing about, so I moved my gold. And where did you move it to? I put it under that pile of sticks there at the foot of your great oak tree. Hmm, we'll see about that, said Nancy. Bring those sticks here, said Graham, and I'll sort through them for any stray coins. So Nancy began to bring armful after armful of sticks. Graham sorted through them and then made a nice neat pile of firewood on the other side of the door. Well, the whole of the stick pile was there and no gold to be found. Ah, uh, leprechaun, you're lying, grumbled Nancy. And she stepped in front of him and she grabbed him by his wee shoulders and she shook him until his head wobbled. Tell me where you've hidden your gold. I've hidden it under the river. What? Said Nancy, under the river? How'd you get it under the river? And how am I to be getting it out again? Ah, uh, said the leprechaun, I've told you where. I'll not be telling you how. So Nancy got the bucket. And she hiked up her skirts, took off her boots, and waded into the river. Well, she began bailing the river out at a great rate. The water would come out of the bucket and hit the bank and slide right back into the river. Look at that, said the leprechaun. Can't she see that it's all just sliding right back where it came from? I heard that, leprechaun. And after that, Nancy took every bucket full of water and poured it into the great rain barrel on the back porch. Well, soon the rain barrel was full to the brim, and the river just as deep as it had always been. Ah, oh, leprechaun, you're lying again. We might as well let him go, Graham. He's not going to tell us the truth. Now, now, said Graham, don't be hasty, girl. You know, I've heard tell that leprechauns are bound by fairy law to tell the truth. Then tell us where your gold is hidden, said Nancy. It's in your very own potato patch, said the leprechaun. <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it, said Nancy. But she went to fetch the spade. And she went out to the potato patch. And she began digging and grubbing in the dirt. Graham smiled to see all the potatoes lying about. Well, Nancy dug and dug until all but one potato plant was uprooted. But she'd had enough. She threw the spade down in disgust. I'm sick of digging, and I'm sick of lying leprechauns. Let him go, Graham. We'll be needing that sack for the potatoes. So, Graham loosened the sack from around the leprechaun's neck, and he was gone, like a shooting star in the night. That night, Nancy and Graham supped on good, hot, hearty potato soup in their warm, dry hut. While outside in the potato patch, the leprechaun was digging up that last potato plant. I said the leprechaun, as he bent down to pick up his pot of gold. Leprechauns never lie. And he trotted off to hide it in a safer place. And so you see, leprechauns never lie. <laughs> and that's a story by Lorna Bailey. Did you guys like that story?